and it says, presented on this occasion to Malcolm Cox in recognition of his role as teacher for the Thames Valley Churches of Christ, so shall my word that goes forth from my mouth, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So Malcolm, thank you so much. Tim wanted me to read a scripture from 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 11. Uh, it says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just, in fact, uh, just as, in fact, uh, you are doing. And, you know, Malcolm has certainly uh, embraced uh, the work that he's got the gift uh, to do in a great way. And I think we've all really benefited and uh, appreciated and, I think, all personally grown as a result of, of his teaching. Sharing his observation of Malcolm's passion for the scriptures and willingness to tackle difficult topics. In India, our brother Rabu Katragada expresses his admiration. He says, though you have much knowledge, you don't hesitate to say, I don't know, to those difficult questions sometimes. And that's a humble man from the Caribbean. Uh, but Dr. Bailey, our, our good friend down there, heartiest congratulations to you, Malcolm, on being recognized as a teacher. You've been doing the work of a teacher, contributing to the building of ministry in the UK and internationally for some time now. Our friends, Tammy and Andy Fleming, Malcolm has proven himself through the toughest of challenges as a peacemaker. I think this sharing is particularly appropriate. Yeah. A consensus seeker and a servant in the Lord's Church. His gentle manner and spiritual focus amid the crisis of 2003 and afterwards were instrumental in the reunification of London congregation, the calming of hearts and spirits throughout the UK and Ireland. <coughs> Malcolm has deep convictions about the truth and power of scripture, and I'm very excited to acknowledge my dear brother as a fellow teacher in our worldwide churches, uh, churches fellowship. Suzette Lewis from Canada shares her thoughts from Australia, from Andrew Kitchen, who's always been encouraged by Malcolm's thirst and passion for communicating the things of God to the people of God in word, writing, and song. Because he's an unusual man. He's got the musical side. Glenn sends his greetings. This is one of the places where we teach in the master's programs. And also uh, Steve Kennard, who appreciates Malcolm's character, humility, keen intellect, ability to communicate difficult principles in a clear manner. Malcolm is humble, he would say, that's overdone, that's exaggerated, but it's exactly what Stephen sent me, and that's why I put it there. It is true. And he says, always remember, teachers teach. From the U.S., from Dave Pachta, and from Steve Staten, you're a gracious and community-focused, critical, that critical is good, that means you're using your noodle. You are generous towards those who don't always been that way towards you. It's in your nature to see the good. If you know our brother, you know that's the case. Your teacher concerned for the wholeness of the body of Christ, not someone to make out to make a name for himself. Joey Harris, our colleague in the US, has known Malcolm for decades as well, and expresses his congratulations, as does Brian Perkins, Arturo Elizarras in Mexico. A great joy for me to finally, to hear that finally, after all your hard work, you'll be recognized. You've been serving in that role. Thank you so much for your perseverance, despite trials. I've admired and appreciated your work since we connected at the International Teacher Seminar in Paris in 2000. Big hug from all the Mexican teachers and congratulations. Uh, and Africa, on behalf of the 16 members of the Africa Teaching Group, Emmanuel MS says, it's my honor to congratulate our dear brother and comrade. This is from Lagos, Nigeria. No doubt the official recognition as a teacher is long overdue. For Malcolm had set his heart to study the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach his statutes and rules in the Israel of God. And Malcolm, you've done that. And so for me, it's a great honor to convey those wishes and obviously people respect you deeply, uh, globally, certainly as I do and Andy, and we're thrilled to work together now in the Athens Institute, which has started yesterday, and that was such a victory. But we recognize you, and we know that you recognize our love for you and support. Um, rarely have I been as overwhelmed as I feel right now. Uh, thank you, everybody, so much. Thanks, Doug, for those uh, wonderful words. And uh, all my uh, brothers, teaching brothers around the world, who uh, I had no idea were going to be sending messages like that. So thank you ever so much to all of you. My exposure to the scriptures began when I was a youngster, as young as some of you in the back there. And I started reading a Bible that my grandmother gave me, Grandmother Cox. Gave me an old King James with a hard cover and pictures of Jesus inside. <laughs> And I started reading that when I was, I don't know, preteen, I guess, something like that. And I had that Bible with me when I was this age. This is 1981. 
I was at the University of Birmingham. I had just met Penny. She's actually on my left shoulder, but I know she doesn't like photographs of her in public, so I cut her. <laughs> I took mercy, I had mercy and cut her out of the picture there, but she's there with me as my girlfriend at the time. And I was going through a very low time just prior to this. Um, I, I was going to church, but not finding any personal connection with God and very desperate really to try and find uh, meaning in life. And I had a particularly low point when I'd been drinking heavily for a long period of time and was depressed. When I went back to my room at my hold of residence and sat on my bed and thought, where is hope? And I picked up that old Bible I still had from my grandmother and I opened it and sat cross-legged on my bed and wept. It's the first time I'd ever wept, not just cried. And I wept, and I'll tell you why. It's because as I held it open, I thought, I'm sure the answers are in here somewhere. But I can't find them. And I can't find anybody to help me to find where the answers are. And I, I just cried for a long time and didn't know what to do. God brought Penny into my life, and we started a spiritual search together. And not so long after that, we were going through the book of Isaiah, I think, together. And we came across this scripture in Isaiah 30, which has always meant so much to me, which I took to my own heart at the time and prayed a lot about. People of Zion who live in Jerusalem, you will weep no more. How gracious he will be when you cry for help. As soon as he hears, he will answer you. Although the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, your teachers will be hidden no more. With your own eyes, you will see them. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. I read that and thought, oh, I'd love that to be real in my life. Someone to teach me this is the way, walk this way. And I prayed and prayed about this verse for the next few months and then I got a job in London, moved to London, and through Mike D'Souza's <coughs> wife, Julie, who was an old friend of mine, she brought me to church. And the first service I went to was a Wednesday night at the back room of the Lambeth Mission. And lo and behold, in that back room, there was a class being taught. And who was teaching that class? A somewhat younger Douglas Jacobi. <laughs> Doug was teaching an Old Testament class. As my first exposure to church, I went in, I sat there, and my jaw hit the floor. Because for the first time in my life, someone was teaching the Bible in a way that I could understand it. It was relevant, it made sense, and I felt its power. And from that moment on, I thought, I'm staying in this church, and particularly staying around this chap, who's <laughs> followed me around, or I followed him around, for many years now, <laughs> in different places. And that was around uh, this time uh, in my life, 1984, 85, and uh, the night, I was, then I was baptized into Christ at the, uh, in November, on November the 2nd, 1984, that was there. On the night of my baptism, I had some questions about the Holy Spirit. So after that event, we went back to what was then the church office, and Douglas said he'd do some teaching for me on the Holy Spirit. Tim was there, Archie was there, and we did a Holy Spirit study, which went past midnight. I don't remember exactly how long it went, but I think it might have been one in the morning by the time we went home. And I'm glad to say that uh, all that time, that Tim stayed awake. <laughs> and let's just say Archie was really tired that night and didn't manage it. Archie, I love you, but he, you know, he did fall asleep. <laughs> And so, you know, again, it was that, that ability of Doug's and other people to be able to bring the Bible alive and make it relevant and show me its power. Tim was there that night, and of course Tim and I have been connected in one way or the other and the family for all these many, many years now. I'm so grateful, Tim, for you, Chevy, all your family, for your uh, significant, considerable impact in my life and the fact that we've had fallings out and been able to repair them. Um, I was reminded yesterday by a phone call from Sweden that so it was not that long ago, we, we stayed in Agnes's parents' house, I think it was, wasn't it? Um, and that was a retreat that, that Dennis and the Coxes were at amongst other people, and I hadn't seen Tim for a long time. We'd fallen out a few years earlier, had an argument in Pizza Express. It wasn't good. <laughs> and and, and uh, I, we saw each other at the retreat, and I thought, oh, I really need to apologize. So I, I prayed, I steeled myself to apologize, and then, of all things, he got in first and apologized to me first, which really annoyed me. I wanted the high moral ground. But it repaired our relationship, which then a few years later led to me being here. And what a blessing that is. What an incredible blessing that is. This place, a safe home to explore and try things and teach and learn together. 
and not only, only that, but Watford, and I'm grateful to, for some of my <coughs> Watford friends being here today. Thank you for making the journey down and, and the time it's taken you. Thank you. Watford, Thames Valley, kind of joined at the hip in many ways and such a, a joy. Other people have been a great blessing to me. The Recently, the, what we call the Apollos Group, seeing Andy here today, teaching together yesterday in the new AIM program with Andy and Doug was an incredible joy. And I'd like to encourage all of you to consider joining in the next one the time we have a module. But this, what's happening today is rather overwhelming and I'm tremendously grateful, but it's not for me really, in a way. It's really for all of us. And it's for not only us here, but for the people that we can then influence. It's to learn the Bible, it's to learn the power of God's word, to live it and then to be able to pass it on. But God's word is powerful. Many other things are not so powerful. Sometimes we as leaders are not very powerful in a healthy way or a helpful way. Sometimes we as Christians find ourselves rather weaker than we'd like to be. Sometimes we get things wrong in the way that we teach or the way that we live or the way that we organize things, the way we do our services, all kinds of things we get wrong. But you see, God's word is the constant. God's word is where the power is. And the spirit working through his word is what changes lives. And so I just like to encourage us as I finish here by saying, let's never forget where the power is. Let's never forget where the, the nature of God is most clearly revealed to us and helps us and guides us and gives us not only what to do and what to teach, but how to be, to be more like Jesus. There's so many sources that help us, but without this, and without knowing it well, we're going to drift and get off course. But how lucky we are that we have this. We pray we never take it for granted. I just want to finish with um, going back to that scripture. I read this before I was a disciple of Jesus. I read this back in my teenage years, and it had it, it stuck with me ever since. So I've got it here in the King James Version, because that's the version that was in my grandmother's Bible that she gave me. As the rain comes down, and snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void but it shall accomplish what I please, <coughs> and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. God's word never returns void. It has its impact. It has, it has its effect in the way that God wants it to. Let's love God's word. And I want to thank you for supporting me and helping me. And I pray, please pray for me and help me to be the servant of God's word to you. God will be Thank you very much.